This reality is merely a tiny band of frequency, which the body is decoding the information within that frequency, like a computer uh, decoding Wi-Fi. And so when, when people are born, suddenly this becomes their reality. The five sense world that we call human. But when they leave the body, the body is ceasing to decode their reality anymore. And they experience a vastly expanded sense and experience of reality that the, the limitations of the human body decoding systems, the five senses and so on, were denying them during a human experience. That's why it's a human experience. And if people self-identify with the body labels, what I call phantom self, then the next period of human life is going to be very, very challenging. And if we see human life uh, or life as just the biblical three score years and 10 of what we call human, then the emotional impact of that is going to be fantastic. But again, if we expand our awareness beyond the program perceptions of the five senses, because that's where the programming goes on, basically, that and in the, the, the subconscious that connects into the five senses. If we, if we see that this human experience is just a brief set of experiences that our consciousness is having, and our consciousness is a unique point of attention within an infinite flow of consciousness, and actually what we call a human life is just a brief experience on an eternal exploration of all possibility and all potential that our consciousness is eternally having. If we, if we can see the I as infinite awareness having a human experience, and the human experience not being actually the I, then we can not only see that death is just a transition from one state of awareness to another. And that will make what's coming far easier to deal with. And also, on the personal point of view, of the awakening, to realize that we are infinite awareness, having a brief human experience, and that there is no death. There's just stepping out, withdrawing from the biological computer system, basically, the holographic biological computer system that is processing, in, processing information in a certain way, and we call that way that it processes that information human. But we are not human. We are having an experience called human, and then we're on our way to the next experience beyond this tiny reality we call the world. And given that the fear of death, which is a extreme expression of the fear of the unknown, the greatest human fear of all. The fear of death is, is what has that done? They get their power from the fear of death. Once you let that go, there is no death. Only withdrawing from the body that gives you the human experience. So, at some point, thank you God, I will withdraw from this body. It won't be soon, I've got too much to do, but I, at some point I will. You know something? I'll be absolutely deliriously happy when I do. So, authority, threaten me with anything and you won't intimidate me. Because don't fear death, I'll actually welcome it when it comes. And I don't fear you. And I don't fear anything that you can do to me. So, 
authority. You have no power over me because I won't give my power to you, which is the power you would have over me if I did. And because I don't have the ability to be intimidated by you or to fear you or to fear anything you can do to me, I am going to bring you down. Your great reset will move on for a while, but it's coming down. And a new society, a new human experience is going to take its place. And you can piss off from wherever you come from, global cult. And it's this, this energy, the energy of love, the energy of joy. And it's this joy for life, this love that holds it all together, from which comes the determination to do what you know to be right and not be intimidated by any threats from psychopathic prats, because it's coming in the period we're moving into through the autumn, fall and winter and onwards through 2022. This is the way we build a new world and not a great reset. What is human society? It is human perception made manifest. From human perception comes human behavior. We behave the way we do because of the perceptions we have. And the collective human behavior from the collective human perception becomes what we call human society. So to change human society, we need to change perception. And that means changing consciousness. Changing consciousness means changing self-identity and realizing what the true I is and why psychopathic authority through the ages has always wanted to keep from us via what my father used to call bricks and mortar religion. It's tried to keep this knowledge from us of the nature of the true I and it's by moving our self-identity to that that we will not only see the big picture, which is what you do when you do that, you don't see dots anymore. I mean, the five senses see the dots. Expanded states of awareness brought about by the re-designation of self-identity means you see how the dots connect. You see the patterns and the pictures and not just the pixels. But like I say, not only does that help you see it, it means that you're not going to concede to it no matter what level of intimidation. And in the next period that I'm talking about, there are going to be so many challenges for the awakened, challenges for the non-awake, but challenges for the awakened and awakening that will make it seem that we are living a nightmare and there is no way that this can be stopped or turned around. The Great Reset, while it will advance for a while, is not ultimately going to succeed. And it's not going to succeed because of the awakened refusing to compromise with the truth and refusing to compromise with their own self-respect. This human control system that goes back through what we perceive as the ages may seem now to be in its greatest power, but it is actually at the point in the period, just as it thinks it's grasped its anger that its house of cards is coming down. 
the house of cards that is based on programmed human perception, low vibrational emotional states like fear, anxiety, depression, intimidation. That's what holds it together. That's why we have the world that we do. That's why they want us in those emotional states. All different expressions of the, the foundation emotion of fear. That's why they want it. Love doesn't do fear because it knows there's nothing to fear. Fear is a perception. It's not a reality. And it's this energy of love, of joy, of self-respect, of respect for others, of immovable determination and refusal to do anything except that which you know to be right. That is ultimately going to bring this down. And that's why the awakened must not concede an inch in what's coming. Because on the other side, it's coming down. As they say in some religious texts, it is written.